Okay, so I've been um, getting on with the cockpit, and we're just getting to the point now where we can add the um, parts from the Edward sheet, which are here, and they're all the coloured parts. So there's just placards and um, instrument panel faces and, and, and the like, uh, which just go straight on once you've got all the painting finished. Um, so I did paint in the wires here that are moulded in, um, and all of my reference says that it's sort of a brass um, uh, brass tubing. So I've used this colour here from Tamiya just to paint that in. Um, I did manage to keep it quite clean. It's gone over a little bit, but um, if you do get a problem with it, you know, going all around. Generally, if it's just a little bit, you can um, hide that with the wash that's about to go because you'll get a black line next to it, so it defines it. So you don't need to worry too much. You just need to get the highlights of it. Um, and the paint's gone down very well as far as the interior green. So use Mr. Color. Um, well, the, the 364. It's Mr. Color 364 from the um, interior set. So uh, quite pleased with that. It's got a kind of nice sort of satin sheen to it. So um, I should be able to do the weathering straight onto it, especially that being lacquer. So that's two cockpit side walls. Um, then I've just got the control stick there and I've tried to pick out the wires, painted the uh, handle. And then that's just again basic stuff, ready for the um, Edward stuff to go on. Um, I do need to pick out, there's some wires here running down there, so I'll pick those up, but the rest of this is just sort of blocking in colours really, it's nothing special. Just showing you where I've been picking out the black. Um, I did mask and spray out the canopy sections, just as I was getting the interior colour out. Uh, so there's, that's just an Edward set, nothing special to this at all. Um, there was no uh, cut, extra cutting needed, they went on very well, so that's given them a nice strong coat. And then it shows the interior colour from the inside. And that's about it, really. Uh, uh, there's just uh, the instrument panel, which is obviously the main piece. So I've used PVA glue there just to make the dials uh, look like they've got glass in there. And then I've got a bit of PVA glue drying there for the compass to give it a glass look. And that frame there as well, so this is probably one of the most impressive pieces as well where it's got the drilled holes and it's the um, compass holder so just gives it a little bit more detail I must remember to paint these wires in here and um, I've just stuck the seat together so that's uh, this is all the kit part that's a lovely little um, section here it's got very fine points for uh, joining the chair on just like the actual chair does um, I have noticed that I've got the seat belts and they go through this part here and I've had to cut that out so that was a little bit annoying it would have been better to do that before painting but there you go so uh, the seat belts thread through there and go back to the, the bulkhead behind that so next up oil washes
Uh, so we do have a little fit issue which this kit's known for, uh, the Mark V, um, with this section here. So you've got two different options. Uh, you do have, let me just check. You've got part B16 or D33. Now, um, the one I'm using, I think is D33. That's what this section is. There's, there's two different types of this. This is the cover that goes over the fuel tank. Um, this is the one that gives you problems. So I did a lot of test fitting at the start and um, sanded a lot of this back here and was getting a very good fit. Uh, now everything's come together. It's a little bit it's, you know, it's a little bit of a test again because you've got we've obviously got the Edward um, instrument panel there that's slightly gone on, not quite square, so that's caused me a bit of an issue. And if you notice, um, if you put it on like that, you get a bit of a gap there. Whereas it's meant to be sort of flush here and obviously there. Now you can push that down, and if you push it on the bottom there as well, and we bring that together, we start to get a very tight join. So you'd need to clamp all that together and you'd glue it in and it, it should be fine. Um, but I have just sort of I've been moving a little bit, you know, moving the instrument panel a little bit. You can, one of the fixes I saw on the internet is gluing the back piece in here. So glue this all tight and flush up here, let that dry. And then when you clamp this down, glue that down and then leaving this front piece, uh, this front part here, not glued, you're slightly sort of just you'd be able to slightly just move it down like that. And then once the part is on here and sitting flush, then you can push that up and then, you know, you're talking probably, you know, one, a, a point of a mil or something like that on the inside that you're never gonna see. So that might be the best way to do this. Um, but I'm unsure. So uh, you'll have to work through this in your own way if you get to this part, if you're building this kit. Um, but it's just something to look out for and something to be aware of that this part needs to be fettled in. Also, we've got the light that sits in the bottom of the wing here as well. That is meant to go into this hole in the bottom of the cockpit, and it does, but you've got to, you've got to enlarge that hole and sand this back a little bit, because that's got to go in flush. And now it will go in how it's meant to, which is like that, I believe. Uh, so that'll be sitting through the bottom of the cockpit. Again, you could just cut that off because there's actually no way to see the interior part of that light because it's under the seat. Um, I'm sorry about the light in here, it's terrible. I'm trying to get around that. So uh, it's directly under that seat there. When you've got the cockpit section out, you can see through the back and you see under the seat, but not when it's in there. So I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that. I probably will paint that because now it does all fit, as you can see goes in flush there, sits in flush there when it's all brought together so it's not not causing an issue. But that's the other bit that I've seen. The rest of the build is meant to be pretty straightforward so we'll uh, carry on from here. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the cockpit together now, and um, the fuselage together, sorry, and the cockpit's inside, um, and there's quite a lot to be seen there, so I'm quite happy. You're going to be able to see pretty much all of it. Um, now, we do have some fit issues, and I knew this going into it. I did sort of mention them slightly before. It's just trying to get this fuel tank down. Now, <clears throat> this filler makes it look worse than it is. This is only the plastic putty, so, I mean, it almost rubs off with water. I just like to get it on there as a precaution, then I can sand it back through. My main concern is um, keeping these rivets because I don't want, I haven't got a punch and die set, and it's going to be a bit of a pain to make those small bits. But um, I am going to have to do a couple, I think. And we're going to have to rescribe the fuel filler cap here. But uh, I think we're pretty much there. As soon as I sand this back, um, I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay. So then we've got a bit of sanding underneath here and on the back there on the spine of the aircraft and that's uh, all quite normal. Then it's jumping to the wing join. So it's quite a good join there as you get um, that part of the fuselage goes in between the undercarriage section there that we've got. And that's quite a nice strong join. And when that's pulled in, I mean, 
there's a gap but it's a good join there you go it should mate in quite nicely so, I mean that's you know you can't ask for much more than that and then we need to tape up the front as well and then that all will be okay so I'm probably gonna glue this section on first get that all sorted and then bring the upper parts of the wing on and join them in once we're all secure uh, test fitting all the way obviously but it looks like we should get a quite a good join in there as well so here's to hoping so I'm gonna sand all this back now get that joined together and then we'll move on to the next step So believe it or not this is the main parts left on this build now so this is everything um, set out I'm going to leave these parts so we've got the aerial mast the uh, pitot tube and some small hooks to go on the underneath I'm going to spray all of those on the sprue and then um, I've got them fixed at the connecting point so I've gone round and just taken the burr off with a, a knife and uh, then the connecting point is what goes into the plastic on the underneath um, I've cleaned all these parts up, so this here makes up the tailplane section, so you've got the rudder, the horizontal stabilisers and the elevators. Um, I'm going to position the elevators, these are positionable, just going to position them slightly down like that. Um, I'm thinking on that, I could have adjusted the uh, control stick, I might leave them straight with that in mind. Um, not that I don't, I don't think many people are going to worry, but anyway, that, I'll make a decision on that, but you can position them if you want, so that's that whole section. Um, I've been making the um, other parts as well. Now, I don't know which is which here, but one of these is an oil cooler, and the other one is an air intake, I believe. So I'm imagining that's the oil cooler, and that's the air intake. Uh, these fit quite well, so you have um, grill sections to go on the underneath, and then you've got a scoop under the wing, to give you the point of where it fixes and if you push it quite well it goes in nicely so I've um, been test fitting those making sure that once the grills are in that they're actually going to fit and this piece here has actual cut out so it doesn't go right down until you push it and then it clips in like that and it will actually stay in but it's going to need to be held down a little bit while it dries um, I've got the uh, ailerons on. Now these haven't got a lot of detail at all, but um, I'm not a Spitfire buff, and I'm pretty sure that these Spitfires had metal ailerons, so therefore there's, perhaps there shouldn't be any ribbing detail or anything, but they're completely smooth on the underneath. No, no marks at all there. And on the top, there's hardly anything, and they've got a strange sort of um, uh, slant cutout 
area there. But anyway, that's the only ones in the kit, so um, the reviews on this kit are very good, so I'm assuming they're exactly what they're meant to be, but um, who knows. As you can see, I've uh, filled the gaps on the wing route. A lot worse on this side than this side. This was fine. Don't know why, but that was the best I could get it. Uh, then we've got the cutouts here for the guns, and I'm going to be adding these resin, well, resin points there for the uh, and metal cannons from Master um, Company here, and hopefully they fit in quite nice. But you know, with re resin aftermarket, I may have to fettle those in a little bit. Uh, so that's how we are. Um, the air scoop. I've left this before. Um, Sorry, the trop filter, the Vokes filter here. Um, I fit it in, and uh, it's a two-piece construction, so you bring the two together. There's you know, a little bit of a seam line, but you can't do much about that. Uh, it just about fits. There's a bit of a gap here, um, because it's, it's typical, typical Airfix again. They're um, almost sort of too far ahead of themselves, if that makes sense. They haven't quite got the engineering capability to produce a kit to do the things that they've designed for, if that makes sense. I had That's the problem I had with the cockpit. Everything's in there, tons of detail, that's absolutely fantastic, but if Tamiya were to have done it, it it would have fit perfectly. Whereas this, you know, there's a lot of messing about to get it in there. And the um, same is for all of this, really. I mean, the trop filter doesn't go in that well. Um, it just doesn't quite fit because the way that the plastic's moulded, it sort of fades away at the end. Um, so you've got mist moulds and a few sink marks, and that's causing a problem fit here. However, this area, which is pretty poor, gap, I mean, there's no excuse in that. It's as far back as where it's meant to be in this cut-out slot, so I've made that, you know, I've, I've, not got, the, I've got the gap here, so it's not there. So, um, again, no problem, really. It's going to fill easy enough, and, and that shouldn't be a problem. I might put a little bit of plastic card in there, just in that quite wide gap. But it is a pain, and it's you know maybe they should, could have done I'd, maybe they could have done it in a different way, having that as one piece, and then you wouldn't have had to have the join there, for instance. Uh, but nevertheless, we'll persevere. Um, the join here has gone down pretty smooth now. Can't really feel it, but uh, I won't be able to tell until we get a primer coat on. And uh, yeah, so the wings are on. We're not very far away. So as I was saying, everything you see here uh, is all that's left to go before we complete the build. So we've got the weight on wheel tyres there, which are a nice one piece, no tread detail, so we'll just sand that seam line back and that'll be fine. I've got the hubs here that I've just test fit. I'll just check that there's no proper position they're meant to be in, but I'm not. I, I'm almost certain there isn't. Uh, the undercarriage legs uh, might be a bit of a problem because you've got this, um, this fit here. We've got one of these joints, I forget this, this is going back to my old woodworking days. That's a certain type of joint. So we've got the same shape there. And it joins together like that. So it gives it a larger surface area to join. Um, however, I don't know if I'm going to trust that. I might put a bit of brass tube in there just to, just to firm things up. And then it's getting it sat at the right angle. But... Um, that's going to be once everything's painted, so we're not going to need to worry about that just yet. And uh, yeah, so we've got the prop assembly here as well. So this is all the parts, apart from the actual uh, propeller, I've just noticed. I haven't cut that out. Um, and I've lost some of the, I said earlier, some of these rivet details around the front here. It's actually, it's fasteners, I've come to realise. Large bits of raised detail all around the engine cowling here. Uh, they're fasteners, and I've lost a couple in the sanding process. So there's a couple to go on here. Um, they simple enough. If you had a punch and die set, which I don't have, you could just punch a disc out of the right size, glue it on, drill a hole, job done. Uh, I'm going to cut them off of this part, which is the other. Um, if you're not doing the trop filter, that goes on there. So I've got a couple I can take off of that. So I'm going to slice them off and glue them on. And hopefully no one will be any the wiser. And I've lost a couple on the trop filter here so I'll just put one back there and one back there. Uh, you might be able to see here what I'm talking about, the roughness of the sort of moulding, I mean it's just all kind of fades into nowhere, there's no crispness. You've got a nice crisp line all around here and then this bit's all just kind of, uh, I don't know, rough, poorly refined. But that's Airfix, uh, we all know it going into it, we've just got to work with it. So. Um, I'll stick all these bits together now on camera and then we'll be into the primer stage.
Right, well, that didn't work. Um, the resin inserts for the machine guns did not fit whatsoever, and I thought I could sort of sand them back, but um, that wasn't the case. So what I'm going to do is I've cut the barrels off of the kit ones here, because the, the main issue, I mean, I, I smoothed them in, but um, the main issue was uh, this... Well, I don't know what to describe it. The sort of way it comes out of the um, the gun root there. There's sort of uh, no, but part of the barrel is in the root, so it's it's not just a case of sticking a tube on the end and it and it will fit. So what I'm going to do is um, glue those in, drill a hole, and then the new barrels will be taken into those into the kit parts. Uh, it would have been better if I'd done that first time round, but. Uh, this is how you learn. Okay, well, after um, sorting out a few little uh, areas on this build, uh, I think we're finally ready now to um, start thinking about paint. Um, I have just fettled in the cannons here. These have been a terrible fit, which is unusual for master um, barrels. I don't know what the issue was. Um, so, you know, there's, it, we have had problems. Um, I showed you about using their um, fairings which didn't fit at all in here, so I've gone back to using the kit parts, then cut off the barrels to leave um, an area where I can insert the metal barrels, which I've done. Um, obviously that wouldn't have fitted brilliantly, and it didn't, so um, I used quite a lot of super glue and I've just sort of uh, blended those in now. I think they're looking okay. Once I get the first bit of paint on, I'll know, um, I'll have a better idea, but I think they look okay. And then I've just straightened them up by eye, and you know, as long as they're pointing forwards, which they are, and they're level when in flight, then um, that's all we really need to worry about. And they seem okay to me. So that's uh, that's the airframe now done. Cockpit is masked off. Uh, I have attached the rear uh, piece of the canopy there. I'm not sure what that would be called, but that's a fixed bit of glass behind the pilot. Then we've got the domed canopy which is the moving part, and then we've got the windscreen. I do tend to fix the windscreens, but um, in this case I'm not. So I've got it masked off up to there, and then I'll add that on afterwards. As far as the paint scheme, um, there's a little bit of uh, interest in this, so it's not just the um, bog standard stuff. We've got a sort of, um, it's almost like a mix of the two. So you've got ocean grey and uh, the dark earth over sky. Now this was an aircraft that arrived uh, in the sort of in the desert scheme without azure blue so it was midstone and dark earth over sky and then on malta it was um over painted with a hand mixed uh gray so um a sort of dark gray so what i'm going to use is i've seen oh, there is a picture of this aircraft as well which does look a little bit um like that dark gray so i'm going to use uh straight from the bottle this um ijn gray which is xf 77 here from tamia which I used on the Sea Fury build, and it's quite good for a um, kind of a, a lighter dark sea grey. So if you think of the um, Fleet Air Arm colours, it's it's a lighter version of the extra dark sea grey. Um, so that looks uh, that looks the part actually. Um, so I'm going to use that as the grey, and what I've decided to do is paint the whole of the underside sky, uh, which I will be using Mr. Colour Duck Egg Green. We'll see how that goes on and then I might lighten it if it doesn't look quite right by going over with a, another pass. Um, I did was going to use Tamiya Sky but uh, it's, it's a, not quite the right shade. This looks more like it to be honest. And I've got a few other similar colours so I can certainly get somewhere near um, the RAF Sky colour which is uh, always a difficult colour to try and replicate. So we've got that 
going on and then I'm going to go all over the top with the extra dark sea uh, what, uh, extra dark sea grey XF77 with the dark colour and then I've got MRP's dark earth so I'll mask, mask over the um, grey and then apply the dark earth over the top and that should give us a little bit of sort of you know, contrast uh, using the lighter brown over the dark colour it will almost be like doing a pre-shade so um, I don't need to worry about trying to get some definition going and um, that will complete that that's all we're really looking at and then we're on to decals um, so I've got all of the sub assembly uh, sub assemblies ready here um, we've got the propeller here which is is gone together okay uh, as often is the case the back plate and the nose cone leave you know there's a little bit of a lip there but you know, can't do much about that I think it looks fine to me there is sort of, um, I don't know where you describe it, sink marks, I suppose, around the nose here. But um, I actually like that because it gives the impression of, um, it actually looks very realistic, I would say, of sort of dented um, metal. Whenever you look at these planes, they're never um, smooth. In fact, they're quite the opposite. They're surprisingly bumpy. So um, I'm going to leave that and that hopefully I can kind of use some oils to kind of highlight that. Um, and as you can see, it goes on. No problem, it, the back plate fits quite well there, so there's no shape issues, and uh, that automatically makes it look very much like a Spitfire. So that's quite good. So, all we're doing there is black and uh, yellow tips. Then, I've got a few of the other areas here um, all the undercarriage and wheel wells is uh, aluminium, so I'll probably do all the painting first and then swap it over and do the aluminium. Um, same with the wheels, the hubs there are aluminium, and um, We've got the exhausts as well that you might have seen me cutting off the blocks. Uh, these are resin, brass and exhausts. So um, they're going to be painted separately and weathered up and they'll be put in towards the end of the build. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's pretty much about it. I'm going to attach the tail wheel because it's quite a good uh, dry fit. So that just goes straight in like that. So I'm just going to have that in there while I paint the sky and then pull it out again. So that'll get that painted. And that's pretty much it. So um, I don't tend to film the painting because you see it a million times over and it's pretty difficult for the spray boost. So um, we'll recap once I've uh, got the sky and the dark grey colour on and uh, probably show a bit of the masking. So you've just seen me um, applying this and it's just, I thought I'd point this out here, it's, it can be a little bit tricky when you're doing this, so I've obviously sprayed the um, dark grey, <coughs> and you need to bear in mind that everywhere this white tack is, is also going to stay uh, dark grey, so um, I often, I tend to sort of mask, uh, I'll do the blue tack as if I'm masking off this bit. So if you were to do that, for instance, you'd have your tack go all around here and um, it would have that shape. Uh, but the problem with that is, that would mean that that would just be this interior part. And then if you, uh, you're you then gonna mask this part off, you spray your um, dark brown that we're gonna put on, dark earth. And as you peel this away, you're then sort of um, a few mil wider than you think you are. So you've gotta allow for that. So I'm just sort of using this um, on the, I don't know what that is, uh, gun fairing I suppose, or not fairing, um, it's the bulges from the machine gun I think. <coughs> we can see it just runs off the bottom of the tip there, so really, using that as my guide, I kind of just want the tip covered with the um, the white tack, and then as we've sort of got a squiggly line all the way around, um, we're just sort of skimming past that panel, so it's a little bit out to be honest. We can actually use this panel line here which is more correct. So if we just have the white tack just running along there and then 
pretty much coming down where this panel line is, maybe a little bit across. I'm not going to go too mad, as long as the shape's correct, because it is obviously the RAF um, shape. Uh, I think it's the B scheme, actually, because this bit's over here. Uh, but nevertheless, um, we won't get uh, bogged down in that. It does need to be this shape, so um, I do need to try and be a little bit um, correct as far as where the areas are, but I'm not going to worry about the... Um, Edges being exactly like the diagram is what I'm trying to say. So, um, I would say that would be perfect for this area here. And then we're going to cover this in masking tape and uh, so on. So I'm going to now go ahead and do the, the next bit. And you'll see a little bit of on film, but um, I won't uh, bore you to tears watching me do the whole lot. And then um, we'll be ready to spray the dark earth colour. Now the paint is obviously dry and I've put a gloss coat over this as well uh, using um, Mr. Color GX Super Clear Free. Um, and my main concern now is that certainly on camera it's a lot darker anyway in person than in person. But uh, that dark earth is from MRP and it's quite dark and I would hesitate to say that that's the colour that dark earth should be. However, you know, I know that's um, a difficult thing to decide on anyway but with all that said i'm going to be lightening these colors anyway when we get into the oils um i do apologize for the lighting it's not i'm looking at the screen now and this it doesn't look anything like this it, i think the blue is um soaking out some of the color so it is a lot lighter so just imagine that um and i'm hoping that uh, as soon as we get into the weather well i will do i'll be bringing those colors up quite a bit and lightening them with um a few different washes and fading effects and so on uh propeller went on okay it's kind of stuck there and sort of spins um i didn't really intend for it to spin but it does spin that's not a bad thing because it takes a knock now um and i did simulate which it does say in the instructions and you can sort of see in the uh, picture of this aircraft that there was a little bit of overspray, overspray because this um, grey colour was painted over the traditional midstone uh, desert scheme uh, in Malta. So it's a hand mixed sort of colour, hence why I've just picked this um, sort of purpley grey colour. It's a kind of dark grey um, from Tamiya and it oversprays onto the sky colour. So I've just simulated that in places as per the instructions. So I think that looks okay like that. It sort of gives the idea. I've kind of done it a little bit over the top because if you just did it um, subtly, it would almost look like you've, um, it would look like you were not trying to do it, if that makes sense. So um, when you're trying to bring mistakes that are actually in photographs and stuff into your model, you need to kind of do it confidently. Otherwise it just looks like a mistake to the average Joe who doesn't know anything about the subject. So anyway, now the gloss coat's dry, all the um, components are attached apart from the few last bits that will go on after the weathering's complete. So now we'll get into the decals. <laughs> <laughs> 